seeking a balanced approach to a new copyright law in Europe that adapts to new technologies giving consumers more choice and ensuring that the creators get their fair share of the revenue. Hello and welcome to People First, the EPP Group's monthly program on issues with impact on people like you. Joining us to answer some of your questions is Therese komodini kakia Welcome to the show. Thank you. You are the spokeswoman for the EPP Group on copyright, so you're the point person to talk to on this. And why did it take us so long? There's been the internet boom started a long time ago, and this is the first time there's been a major overhaul of, of EU copyright law since the internet boom. Why did it take so long? You are very right. It did take quite a couple of years. But we have to consider that this is a very complex sector. We have a lot of stakeholders who work in different ways, who distribute their creations in different ways. A lot of stakeholders who have very different business models. Are you indicating that this is going to take years and years no. more to get done? No. We now have a commission proposal, so now we can focus. We can focus on very specific proposals, and now we have a clear indication of what the commission would like to have. So guys, before we go to the viewer questions, let's take a look at our report to get a more in-depth look at the issue. It's the first major update of European copyright law since 2001. The aim of the proposed directive is to create EU-wide rules adapted to a rapidly changing cyberscape. The proposals would strengthen copyright protection for the news media and introduce stricter oversight rules for online platforms like YouTube. It would make it easier for video-on-demand services to transmit across the EU, giving more choice to consumers. Critics say EU-wide transmission would undermine business models based on territory-by-territory -territory licensing. But some broadcasters like Sky say they're willing to work with the EU to find a solution. Critics also say copyright protection for the news media didn't work when applied in Germany and Spain. The European Commission argues it will on an EU level. The proposed legislation also aims to make it easier for students and schools to get access to digital materials and for European researchers to use so-called data mining. The bottom line intent of the directive is to help expand a digital single market, to eliminate barriers to online commerce to give European consumers more choice and businesses wider access to market, and to boost cultural and creative industries that employ more than 7 million Europeans and generate 4.5 percent of the EU's GDP. So that's an important part of the economy, and this is in, in part aimed at fighting piracy, which is undermining a lot of creative industries as we speak. How effective do you think this proposed copyright legislation is going to be in fighting piracy? I think it fights piracy indirectly more than through direct measures. And I say indirectly because part, a very big chunk of this proposal is really after making a wider access, right? after giving wider access to, co to consumers, right. after giving more access to more content online. We have seen in the past where people you know, when, when you're on your tablet and you're trying to watch a movie and you get the, the screen telling you this content is not available in your, con in your country or you're trying to buy a dress online and it says, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you can't shop on this site because of where you are situated. We've seen people trying to bypass those systems, trying to bypass those barriers. So this means more access, less temptation for piracy then. Hopefully in that yes. Sense. In that sense. Hopefully yes. Well, let's talk to a consumer first. That was one of our first questions. And what, what, the question of that consumer is very interesting. Bonjour, donc euh, je m'appelle Maïlie, je suis française et c'était par rapport à la loi du copyright. C'était pour savoir ce que ça allait changer, si ça allait euh, changer ma vie par rapport euh, aux livres que je lis ou aux films que je regarde. OK, that's probably the most important question of the show. For people, how is that going to change their lives? It is going to give them much more content. So you, we are expecting that these proposals will actually give users access to a much wider catalog of content, many more films, many more TV channels available, much more music available, but with a difference. You do not have to bypass the legal channels. You can access your cultural and creative content through legal channels. Okay, so we've talked about the consumer. What about the creators? How much does this protect the creator? We know that without creators, the consumers cannot have access to content because it is the creators that actually come 
come up with that content. And therefore, as EPP, we want to find a balance. We want to make sure that creators have legal access to more content, and that means by having legal access, you are automatically ensuring a fairer compensation, a fairer remuneration for creators. We want more investment in the creative and cultural industries. So that includes also the creators, the performers, the authors. Okay, but what about in the movie industry? There's this concept of buy in one country, get 27 others free. And that's what people see in the movie industry that this copyright law is going to do. How do you argue about that? It is not necessarily going to do that. When we're speaking of the film industry, this is one of the industries of which we Europeans should be very proud of. This is an industry that literally exposes and celebrates the cultural diversity we find in Europe, the linguistic diversity we find in Europe. Yes, and they need to make money with it. And they need to make money with it. So what do they do is that they apply the territorial principle. Copyright reform is not an affrontation to the territorial principle. There are situations where the, ter the applicability of the territorial principle is justified. Okay, now let's go to small businesses. We talked to uh, some people running a small business and this was their question about this copyright law. Bonjour, je suis Nathalie Douran. Ici, nous avons une entreprise qui s'appelle Make a Dish. Et alors, par rapport à cette loi sur les, les droits d'auteur, je voudrais savoir quel est le, le rapport, le lien entre cette loi et les, les artisans, les petits commerçants. They sell in different countries. This is typical for a small business. Um, how does this law help them? This law facilitates uh, their, their e-commerce by actually removing some of the barriers. <coughs> First of all, let's just make sure to say that internet comes without barriers, but very often it is us, people, who actually in insert the barriers on the use like of internet. Like geo-blocking or something. Like geo-blocking. Yeah. Yeah. And so when it comes to SMEs, we just need to make sure that the copyright reform is not overly burdensome for them, is not overly costly for them, but that it facilitates their work by removing the barriers that are prejudicial, that puts them in a disadvantage. At the same time, we should not stop at copyright. We need to look at other barriers as well. Okay, good. And you might have heard the horns playing in the background for the last question. There was a band there, and we pulled one of the musicians aside and asked him, what he thought about this copyright law, what concerns he has about it. Bonjour, je m'appelle Jean-François Clès, je compose à l'occasion, j'arrange des, des œuvres, mais je suis une voix qui crie dans le désert. Avec cette loi qui va se passer, les gros compositeurs, les gros interprètes et les, gros, les grosses firmes auront accès et les autres pas. Comment voulez-vous qu'on soit informé Okay, now this is a, a question from a, you know, an individual musician who doesn't have uh, the legal eagles of a large uh, music company. He's on his own, he's not informed. How can this law help him? We do recognize that very often performers, artists, the original composer get very little negotiating power. And I think the Commission's proposal tries to address this. It does so by suggesting that these people, these rights holders, must have more transparency in performing or in, in undertaking a contractual relationship. Mm -hmm. But there is also another mechanism that is being introduced, and that is the mechanism for the ability for the authors, for the creators to have the ability to renegotiate a contract. And there's something related to that, because you said you would like to look at how the Commission's proposals affect user-generated content. And that can be somebody at a, at, a, at a concert recording something and putting it on YouTube. Yep. What, what's going to happen with that? Now let's, let's also uh, be clear about this. I think the music industry is not really after stopping us as concert goers from taking a snippet from a concert, maybe with our friends in it as well, and uploading it on YouTube. I think what they're really concerned about is, you know, putting out a, a song the official marketed song yeah. and having someone copy it and then put it on That's YouTube. That's different. That is very different. So we need to have an, a look, a very good analysis of the different rights that are being, um, let's say, are being affected by these issues. Okay. Let's shift gears and go to academia now. We talked to an academic who has completely different concerns about this copyright law. Bonjour, je m'appelle Melvin, je suis étudiant en traduction et j'ai 20 ans. Et je me demandais en fait comment la loi des droits d'auteur va changer ma manière de rechercher des informations. Ok, now concretely, that is researchers who want to do, say, uh, digging into, uh, uh, what is it, data mining. 
And how can this copyright law affect them? Does it get tougher on them or does it loosen things up for them to do their job? We believe that uh, uh, public mission institutions such as universities, such as educational institutions, even when they partner up with private companies, carry out and heavily invest in early research. Early research that could have uh, an outcome, a positive outcome on public health, on treatment of cancer, for example, on treatment of brain, um, brain health. So the law so integrates the law that. puts this together. Yeah. Therese komorini kakia thank you very much for joining us. That's it for now on People First. Find out more about the activities of the largest political force in Parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.